hello everyone in this video we will be going over the steps on how to get started and up and running with a brand new raspberry pi which mainly involves installing the raspberry pi operating system and connecting the necessary components to your raspberry pi so first let's just go over the materials that will be needed for this video obviously you need a raspberry pi i'm using the latest raspberry pi the raspberry pi 4 but the steps and materials will be pretty much the same for other models next up you need a micro sd card just make sure that the storage size of the card is at least 8 gigabytes i believe that 16 gigabytes is the official recommendation but you can use an sd card that has more storage as well now of course make sure that you have a computer on hand whether it's a laptop or desktop windows or mac does not matter we just need a place to download and transfer the raspberry pi operating system meaning that we will first download the operating system onto a separate computer and then transfer that operating system onto the micro sd card and to do that we need a way to connect our micro sd card to our computer now some computers have a micro sd or a regular sd card slot where you can just directly plug the card into the computer but if you don't have that slot you can use a micro sd card reader that plugs into your computer via usb Lastly, just double check that you have the basic necessities for running and using your Raspberry Pi, which includes a 5.1 volt power supply. Note that the amount of amperage needed will depend on your model and what you are doing with your Raspberry Pi. For example, the official recommendation is 3 amps for the Raspberry Pi 4, but we will have a link in the description below to the official power supply recommendations for each Raspberry Pi model. Moving on, any mouse, keyboard, and monitor will do. Just make sure that you have the right wire for connecting your monitor to your Raspberry Pi. For example, for video output, the Raspberry Pi models 1 through 3 have an HDMI port, the Raspberry Pi 0 has a mini HDMI port, and the Raspberry Pi 4, which is what I'm using in this video, has a micro HDMI port. Also, the Raspberry Pi Zero does not have regular USB ports, but rather micro USB ports. So for those rare few of you, keep that in mind when trying to plug in your mouse or keyboard into your Raspberry Pi later on in this video. Once you have all the materials needed for this video, let's start by connecting our SD card to our computer. If you are using an SD card reader, then plug your SD card into the card reader and then plug the card reader into your computer. Otherwise, just plug your card directly into the computer. After you do that, turn your computer on. Once your computer is on, open up the web browser of your choice. So for me, it will be Google Chrome and go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads. Link to this will be in the description below. Here we will download the Raspberry Pi imager, which will install the Raspberry Pi operating system to an SD card. Now, depending on the operating system of the computer that you are currently on, click on the appropriate link out of these three links to begin downloading the imager. For example, I am on a Windows computer, so I'm going to click on where it says Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows. Once the Imager setup is done downloading, proceed to start up the setup application. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Just click on yes, and then once the actual application starts, go ahead and click on install. Once the imager has finished installing, make sure that the checkbox to the left of Run Raspberry Pi Imager is enabled and click on finish. After that, the actual Raspberry Pi imager application should have started and from here, let's select the operating system that we want to install onto our SD card by clicking on Choose OS and select the option labeled Raspberry Pi OS in parentheses 32-bit. Then let's select the SD card that we want to install this operating system on by clicking on Choose SD Card and select either your SD card reader or your actual SD card. Now you should see a new button labeled right appear. Go ahead and click on that button and you will be prompted with are you sure you want to continue? Go ahead and click on yes to start writing the Raspberry Pi OS onto your SD card. Once the imager has finished writing the operating system onto your card, we can now remove the SD card or SD card reader from our computer, but first go to File Explorer and on the left side, right click either the SD card or SD card reader and select eject. Now go ahead and unplug the SD card or SD card reader from your computer, then take the SD card and insert it into the micro SD card slot on the back of your Raspberry Pi. After that, go ahead and plug your mouse, keyboard, and monitor to your Raspberry Pi and make sure that your monitor is powered on. 
finally, let's turn on our Raspberry Pi by plugging our power supply into our Raspberry Pi on one end and into an outlet on the other end. And note that some power supplies may have a power switch, so make sure to flip that on after plugging in your power supply. And once that's done, you should now see a couple or a few lights on your Raspberry Pi board and your monitor should start displaying something as well. Of course, don't forget to turn your monitor on while doing this. So the Raspberry Pi will take some time to start up. It's loading up the operating system that we just wrote onto our SD card. And since this is the first time we started this operating system, we are going to be prompted with welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Just go ahead and click on next. And then from here, you can select your country, language, time zone, whether or not you want to use the English language or US keyboard. Note that if you are not sure of some of these settings, you can always change them at a later time. I just want to note that even though I don't do it in this video, I do recommend actually enabling the options here labeled use English language and use US keyboard. But once you're done configuring these location settings, go ahead and click next again. The next prompt will be for your Raspberry Pi's user account password. So go ahead, set a new password and confirm that new password. And once that's done, uh, click on next again. The next prompt will be about whether or not the desktop is filling the entire monitor screen. Go ahead and click the checkbox only if the desktop is not filling the entire screen currently. Once that's done, click on next again. That should take you to a list of Wi-Fi networks in your area. Just go ahead and select the Wi-Fi network that you normally use. Enter the password for that network if needed. And once that's finished, click on next. That should take you to this prompt that will ask you if you want to check your operating system and applications to see if they need to be updated. Go ahead and click on next. Now for me, it says that my system is up to date. If it says that for you too, just click on OK. Now if you do have updates that need to be installed, then you will be given more prompts and have to wait a little longer for those updates to be installed or they may be installed upon restarting the Raspberry Pi. Nevertheless, no matter what, after whether you had updates or not, you should be taken to the last prompt, which will basically ask you to restart the Raspberry Pi, so go ahead and click on restart. And once your Raspberry Pi has successfully restarted, we can go ahead and start using our Pi. So to start, let's just do a couple of basic tests. First, let's check that our internet connection is actually working. So go to the top left corner here and you should see a Raspberry Pi icon. And to the right of that Raspberry Pi icon, you should see a web browser icon. So go ahead and click on that and should, that should start up the default web browser, which should be the Chromium web browser. And then in the search bar here, let's type anything we want to look up. So I'm gonna type out Raspberry Pi, you can type out anything. And once you have something typed out, go ahead and press enter to search for that thing you typed out in the default search engine of this web browser, which should be DuckDuckGo. And as you can see from the resulting web page, we can see a list of search results related to what we just typed out, which means that our internet connection is indeed working. Next up, let's end the video by doing some programming. So back to the top left corner of the screen, click on the Raspberry Pi icon this time and hover over where it says programming from the drop down menu. And then to the right of that, select the Thonny Python IDE. This will open up a IDE text editor environment where you can write and run Python code. So we're just gonna write a very simple line of Python code. It's really just gonna be print and then in parentheses and in quotes, hello world. And then let's execute this line of Python code by clicking the button labeled run. And then before we actually run our code, it'll prompt us to save this file. So um, navigate to wherever you want to save this file and you can literally call this file whatever you want. So I'm going to call it test and I'm going to save it in my documents folder and we're going to click on OK. Once that file is saved, it will run that line of code and you'll see the output in the shell window down below and the output is hello world. That makes sense and that means everything is working as it should be. If all of that went well, then you can shut down the Raspberry Pi when you are not using it. To do that, go back to the Raspberry Pi icon on the top left corner. This time, select Log Out from the drop down menu, and from here, click on where it says Shut Down. And don't forget to unplug the power supply or turn it off after shutting down your Raspberry Pi. And that is pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. If you found the video useful, then please leave a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join our Discord server, and follow us on our other social media pages. Links to all of those will be in the description below. 
you want to help support the channel further, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon, donating to us through PayPal, sponsoring us on GitHub, becoming a member of our YouTube channel, or buying our merchandise on Teespring. Links to all of those will also be in the description. Special thanks to our higher tier donors, which include Logical Cuber, Momo Cheng, Jacob Brand, Stumpy, Dwight Everhart, Mitch Small, Felix Pedersen, Mark Wetch, Jimmy Westcott, Max Norris, Morgan Heidemann, Elise, BioBlitz Payne, Lucas Moskin, Rick Morgan, Keith Perry, and Solar Tricks. That is all. Have a good day.